Hey, y'all, this is Tim Miller with The Bulwark, and somebody at Mar-a-Lago really screwed Trump over with their little social media video of his speech at a fundraiser for the insane far-right candidate running for governor of North Carolina, Mark Robinson. Robinson is extreme right cultural conservative, has said the most insane things about gays and trans people and everything that you would imagine. We'll be having more videos about him as we get closer to the 2024 election. But Trump's vulnerability here isn't just the extremists that he's campaigning with. It's what he was saying when he thought he was just among friends at this fundraiser was caught on tape, uploaded to social media, and the Biden campaign has grabbed and they've taken advantage of. And you're going to be seeing these videos over and over again. The first video which kind of reminds me a little bit of the 47% video that really ended up killing Mitt Romney's campaign in 2012. 47% were with him who are dependent upon government, who believe that they're entitled to health care, to food, to housing, to you name it. Here is Donald Trump talking about his plans for the rich people that are in attendance at this fundraiser. As you all people that have a lot of money, I know uh, 20 of you and you're rich as hell. We're gonna give you tax cuts, we're gonna pay off our debt. We're gonna do all of the things that we have. You're rich as hell, we're gonna give you tax cuts. Does that sound like the populist candidate that is going to be uh, galvanizing the blue collar working class coalition at the diners in rural Pennsylvania and rural Wisconsin? Not to me, there's always been this dichotomy of Trump, right? That he's this rich guy with gold plated everything. And, you know, he has his toilets covered in gold lame. And, you know, he has these pictures of himself and this obscenely ostentatious condo. But like his voters always were able to separate that because they believed that Trump was the rich guy that was fighting for them, the class trader. This is different. This is Trump looking at a room of oligarchs and rich people and saying to them, we're going to give you tax cuts. That's what I want to do when I get back in there. Not help the forgotten man. Not drain the swamp. swamp. Not go after the elites. And they call themselves elite. You know, this is old school right and left politics. You know, for all of the crazy stuff, you might you might think, well, Tim, I, I, for all the crazy shit Trump has said, this is the thing that's going to hurt him. But, you know, Trump's conspiracy mongering and his you know, bigoted jokes and his goofiness and all, all the weirdness of Trump, you know, sometimes just washes away in people's minds, right? There's just too much of them it, for them to take in. But something like this is very specific and, and, and it plays into the old Republican Democratic playbook that Democrats used against Republicans for a long time, that Republicans only cared about the rich and that the Democrats were fighting for the working man. That Trump turned that whole dichotomy on its head by arguing that he was the one for the working man. And it's the Democrats that care about the effete rich people with their, you know, critical race theory and, you know, the blah, blah, blah. By saying explicitly that he wants to help the people who are rich as hell, I think he undermines that case a little bit. Does it mean that all the people in the red hats at the Trump rallies are going to turn around and start voting for Joe Biden? No. But could it undermine, undermine his margins in those rural parts of the country? in the small cities and towns where he has done so well in the past, I think possibly. And I think that Biden is going to use that and the money that he spent on infrastructure and the rules that he put in place to cut down the price of prescription drugs to make a economic populist case that undermines Trump with some of the softer Obama Trump voters that might be able to bring some of those folks back into the fold. I think this little secret video. He also looks terrible. It's like that down under video. If you're ever making a video of yourself, you never want to have that camera looking down under there so you can see your jowls. So it's an ugly video. Trump won't like that. And I think it's going to undermine his core message. Okay, one more. Same event. The day you see they're calling me a dictator. They're saying Trump wants to be a dictator. Trump wants to be. And you know how it started? He asked me a question. Please say you don't want to be a dictator. I said, no, I won't say that. I want to be a dictator for one day. Again, now he said this a few times, you know, that, oh, I want to be a dictator just on day one. But it's the way in which you say it. Can you cut 
an ad out of this video and make it something that freaks people out and wakes them up. And there's something about this being kind of a secret video. Like he's not on stage. You know, it, it, so it doesn't seem like it's planned. And, and w the way he says it, I won't say I don't want to be a dictator. So, you know, the gaffe on Hannity uh, you know, it, it's a little bit of a Rorschach test. Some people saw it as a joke. Some people saw it as very scary. He says, you're not going to be a dictator, are you? I said, no, 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 other than day one. Something like this, I think it's harder to say that this is a joke, right? He's he's being very serious. He's being very straightforward on a, you know, secret video, so to speak, on, on a video that he didn't intend to go out at least. Um, and again, I think if you put those things together in a 30-second ad, next year for these swing voters to see here's a guy that's going out there and saying i'm going to do tax cuts for the rich and i won't say that i don't want to be a dictator please say you don't want to be a dictator I say, no i won't say that i want to be a dictator for one day let me tell you not popular not popular positions i think these are videos that could come back to haunt trump and i think it's noteworthy that as you see here the biden harris campaign the biden harris hq it's already on it and was already putting those out on their feed. They both have 2 million views on X, actually. I know they put it out on threads and the other apps. So I think you're going to see more of these. There is going to be this drip, drip, drip as people start to re-engage with the craziness uh, of Trump and, and with all of his positions that, that aren't really, when they get reminded of all of his positions that aren't very popular. All right. Hope you all have a good weekend. We'll be back here for more at The Bulwark. Uh, make sure to subscribe to our page. I'm doing a new series where I monitor the right over on Brian Tyler Cohen's YouTube. You can go check that out as well. And uh, we'll be seeing you back here soon. Hey, everybody. We're gearing up for 2024. And if you want to join us and help save democracy, become a Bulwark Plus member. Uh, if you like these videos, we've got a ton more uh, content where that comes from. Uh, we've got podcasts. We have newsletters. Uh, a lot of it is for free, but we keep some stuff behind the paywall uh, for people that are really into our content and just can't get enough. Um, or if you just want to support us because we're trying to help get this out in the ether, we are all, many of us are former Republicans. We're trying to convince former Republicans and get former Republicans to come to the light, recognize the threat of MAGA. And so please, we would appreciate it if you can jump on board and become a Bulwark Plus member. We'll see you soon.